you for being here again. <laughs> We're so grateful. Every time we begin one of these programs, I just sense the presence of the Lord because he is just wanting to impart something to all of us. And as we pray and as we wait upon him, he always renews our strength. He always invigorates us. And we look at these promises or commands or things from the Word of God as like little anchor pieces. And we know that this is not to do with your entire Bible study and certainly not supposed to be all of your prayer life by any means. But it's a little bit of an encouragement along the way so that we can be able to enter into something consistently. So today we're going to look at words of Moses that he spoke in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. And this is from the New King James Version of the Bible. And he, this is what he said. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commands of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. When we stop and we see how that God gives commands, those commands are not just arbitrary. His commands are not just things that, well, we hope that we follow them, we hope that we can make it through and, and trust and believe in them. No, these commands are for our well-being. The things that God commands for his people, the things that he wants for us to be able to enter into, really are for our good. God does set rules and laws in all of his creation. All of nature is full of principles and precepts. We can see it. The word says line upon line, precept upon precept. God has outlined for us a way to live. The entire universe is framed on him. He is the coherence. He is the one that holds all things together in him, the word tells us and the word says. But we know that these words, these precepts, these commands are not just somehow so he can be secure. They're for our good. When God tells us to do something, it's for our good. And it may actually be hard to understand sometimes, hard to make sense of, but we don't have to do it with just our own understanding. We're leaning on him, we're learning of him, we're drawing on him. His strength is made perfect in our weakness and we understand that as we lean into God, he is always there to undergird us. Let's take a look at this scripture one more time and then we're going to go to prayer about it. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, and we're reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And now, Israel, what does the Lord require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commands of the Lord and his statutes which I command you today for your good. That is it. It's for your good. God is giving us these commands. Now let's just take them. Take them into our heart. Take them into our souls. Lord, we ask as we pray today, we ask that you would show us where there is rebellion in us. Help reveal to us the parts of us that are not yet completed so that we can see and we can receive. Lord, we want to be able to be embracing of your commands. But Lord, we know that our hearts, according to your word, our hearts are duplicitous. Our hearts are divided. We want to do what's right, according to Romans 7, but we also find ourselves doing what's wrong. 
And so, Lord, we ask that today you would help us to be able to come into a sense of symmetry with your commands, with your callings, with those things that you are wanting us to walk in. Holy Spirit, you must do this work. This is beyond us. Lord, we, we can barely see outside to be able to really understand what's going on when we look at the world, when we look at governance, when we see the injustices that happen. It just staggers us, Lord. Let alone looking internally. But God, your word does tell us that we are to judge ourselves lest we be judged. So Lord, I pray that you'll help us because these are hard things to do correctly. We want to be able to judge our own selves without being condemnatory, without being belittling, without saying, I'm stupid. Lord, we want to be able to really do this right. We ask that you'd open the eyes of our understandings so that we could receive your commands, so that we could go into your word daily and find those things that are written for us. And they're written literally, like Moses said, these commands are, are for us. They're for our benefit. They're guidelines. They give us a sense of belonging. They give us a sense of place. And so, Father, we pray that you will help us to understand how to live our lives, moving with you with your commands, not being resistant to them, not making ourselves feel above anybody else if we see that we think we're keeping your commands. Because, Lord, we know that at the infinite detail of our own lives, we're, we're not fully aware of where we're missing it. We just know that your grace is necessary to cover us. And, Lord, though we try to be obedient, and though we set our hearts on being one with you, Lord. We understand we're human, we're weak, but Lord, you're able to show us and to guide us. And we pray, Lord, that you will lift us up. Lift up your people today. Strengthen us. Again, like we prayed last week even, <laughs> Lord, we ask you to lift up the hands that hang down, that you would strengthen the feeble knees. Any area of weakness in our beings, we pray for our bodies. Lord, that you would impart your grace to us in the form of health. Lord, we ask that you'll bless your people in this day, moving into the day, sleeping through the night, cradled in your arms, confident, Lord, that you have been giving these commands that are really for our good. Amen. And God bless you.